Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's question is an alpha helix is formed by hydrogen bounding between the hydrogen of an amine group and backbone carbonyl group. How many amino acids upstream of it? So the question is pretty easy. Here is a picture of the alpha helix secondary structure. So primary structure is just a sequence of the amino acids and these amino acids also can make certain motifs which we call secondary structures and it can be alpha helix or beta pleated sheets. And as you see in this example, amino acid sequence can fold on itself making such alpha helixes where amino group contact with carboxylic group, amino group being slightly positive and carboxylic group being slightly negative. So here we have hydrogen interaction. So all this structure is due to hydrogen bounding. How the structures are formed? I can give you an answer right away. But before I can give you an answer, I want to talk about certain misconceptions which are due to wrong pictures which you can find on the internet or in your textbooks. For example, what is wrong on this picture? Here is one amino acid, here is another one and here this carboxylic acid group lose this hydroxide and amino group lose this hydrogen. One molecule of water is formed so we call this as condensation synthesis and one continuous molecule of amino acid form. So in this case this is D-peptide and here is a peptide bond. But what is wrong with this bond if you will apply this picture to this uh, sequence you are not going to get this interaction of uh, hydrogen and this oxygen because actually the correct picture should look like this. Take a look. This time as you see this carboxylic group and amino group has oxygen and hydrogen on the different sides. Now you see how actually this peptide bond looks like. Like this and not like this. But still even this picture contains a mistake. Can you find one? And here's a mistake. Our group here shown in cis form but our groups usually found in trans form. So if of one amino acid R group is going to be on this side, then this R2 group have to be on this side. So we say that they are in trans form. Though sometimes this R groups can be found on the same side which we call cis form, but this is energetically not favorable. Now I want you to show the picture which is going to help you to understand these interactions in this alpha helix. So take a look at this picture and now we see amino group, central alpha carbon, R group and hydrogen and here is a carboxylic acid group. Here is a peptide bond and as you see now carboxylic group on one side, amino group on the other side and R group also on the other side if we compare with this amino acid group which is on top here. So they are in trans form. I also want to bring to your attention that those here single bonds is shown. Actually amino acid cannot rotate freely anywhere where we see single bond because this peptide bond actually is not single bond it's called partially double bond. So we can show it here on the picture like this, here also like this. So now you see that uh, actually we have partially double bond in each peptide bond and we do not have rotation in the peptide bond. So it gives us only these two single bonds between nitrogen group and carboxylic group. Here is alpha central alpha carbon 
and only it can rotate. So it can take this position of the R group or it can be found here on the top. But again, favorable position would be trans position. Now let's also add charges here. So this hydrogen here would have slightly positive charge. This oxygen here would have slightly negative charge, slightly positive charge here, slightly negative and positive charges here. Now imagine that this polypeptide sequence fold on itself. So let me add another picture here. And we are going to see something like this. This is going to be the same polypeptide. But now take a look what's going to happen. We can find negative charge here. That means that hydrogen bonding going to happen here. So you see on this picture also. And we also going to find positive charge here. So we can see another hydrogen bond here on this picture. It can be this one. So how strong this hydrogen bonds? Actually, if you consider double stranded DNA, for example, you will find that it can be denaturated at the degrees of about 100 Celsius. So it's pretty strong, but can be disrupted. That's why when we cook our meal, proteins would be denaturated at the about 100 degrees of Celsius because this hydrogen bonds would be disrupted. The whole purpose of my video was to clarify this confusion with pictures which can be very misleading for those people who struggle to understand how this hydrogen interaction works in alpha helixes. Now we can choose the correct answer. So the question is how many amino acids upstream of it and it would be easier if I would draw a new picture. So first amino acid, here is a second amino acid and here is a peptide bond between them. Here is a third amino acid and here is a peptide bond. Here is a fourth amino acid and peptide bond between third and fourth and here is a fifth amino acid and here is a peptide bond. So now you see that we have one full turn. There are about 3.6 amino acids residues per one turn. In each peptide bond we have carboxyl group and amino group. Carboxyl group and amino group here. Carboxyl group and amino group here. Carboxyl group and amino group here. And as you see amino group is slightly positively charged. Carboxyl group is slightly negatively charged. So here we have our first hydrogen bond. So according to this picture, carboxylic acid group of the first amino acid is going to make hydrogen bond with amino group of the one, two, three, four, fifth amino acid. And they are going to be one, two, three, four amino acids away from each other. And this is answer C. But again, I just want to uh, clarify that between amino acids that has this hydrogen interaction, we have one, two, three amino acids. And interaction happens between first and fifth amino acid. And there are one, two, three, four amino acids downstream or upstream because alpha helix would continue. But I also want you to understand that first four residues have just only one hydrogen bond and the rest amino acids in the middle of the alpha helix has two hydrogen bonds per one amino acid. For example, again, first amino acid would has one hydrogen bond with fifth amino acid, but fifth amino acid is going to have one hydrogen bond with the first amino acid and one hydrogen bond. Five plus four would be nine with ninth amino acid. So we call such configuration I plus four if first amino acid interacts with the fifth, then 
fifths would interact with the ninth. So we'll have two interaction hydrogen bonds between uh, amino acid number one and number nine. And second amino acid would have hydrogen bond, so two plus four with amino acid number six and six plus four with amino acid number 10 and two. This is not the only one configuration possible for alpha helix, but I will talk about those different configurations in my following videos. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.